Oscar Harvest Day is a big, huge event, and Steve White and I have had a chance to really hang out here all we three have. days. Good evening and welcome to NTV's Girl, a special recap of everything at Husker Harvest Days, the 36th year of the world's largest totally irrigated working farm show. So many new things to see and producers able to come out here, make even big business decisions, get some answers, get solutions, but there's also some fun and cool stuff We've along the way We've had a well. lot of fun. We got to hang out with the governor, but also we invited some FFA students to join us. They got to ask him some questions and he asked them some questions. You're going to want to stay tuned to see them as they interacted here out with us. Yes, and they didn't hold back. And that was just one of our favorite highlights. There's many more that we're going to show you all here on the program. Thanks for watching NTV's Grow. Enjoy. Technology it's not Husker Harvest Days if you don't visit solution. the field demo, Why seeing the tractors and the combines in action. Dina is with Farm Progress, and this is really one of the highlights of the show, isn't it? Absolutely. People come because, of course, we have over 600 exhibitors, and it's a really great show, but they love to see the combines actually running through the field. So it's one of the highlights, definitely, for visitors that come to the show. Like I tell people who aren't in agriculture, if you're a car guy, you might go to a big Detroit auto show or something. This, though, if you want to see combines that are being displayed or heads or grain carts or whatever, many times for the first time anybody will see them is a show like this, right? That's right. We have several companies that are displaying new heads this year um, and several of the major manufacturers that have new combines out. So you're right. They've seen it in uh, magazines, but they haven't actually been able to see it live and in person. So this is a great time to check out all that new technology. And I love it because everybody gets to come on out afterwards and they look and they see how clean did it cut. Everybody's got their own little things that they're looking for. It cracks me up sometimes, but the producers get to come and see side by side how the machines compare. Where else are you going to see that? I, I know very few places that do combine demos like we do here at Husker Harvest Days. It really is one of our, uh, one of the favorite attractions. And kudos to Roger Libby and his crew because they were planting the corn and it still was snowing, you know, so the fact that we're even doing those demos, that's a real testament. Yeah, it was a really wet uh, spring and cool spring so the corn actually was about a week later going in than normal which doesn't sound like it's a big deal but when we have a very specific time when we're going to be har harvesting uh, it's a little bit different than a normal farmer but Roger and his crew were able to get it in and uh, we're able to ha har harvest it today and this week. One of the things I'm sure everybody's looking forward to is that Gearing Hoff head. Tell me a little bit about that one. So Gearing Hoff is launching a new head here at Husker Harvest Days. This is the first time that people have been able to see it in the field and it's called the Independence Head. So so it can cut any direction in a field. You don't have to go straight on with a row. You can go, um, you can go kitty corner across the field. You can go straight across, however you want to go, and it will. Um, chop the stalks and harvest the corn as it goes through. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could get crazy and go zigzags and circles. But the nice thing is in Nebraska, we've got a center pivot and maybe you've got those corners. That's probably the practical application around here, right? Right. You could absolutely do figure eights in your field if you wanted to, but it will be very nice for um, producers that have the center pivots. And field demos a couple of times a day out here? Yeah, uh, harvesting demos are at 11 each morning. Uh, then we do tillage at 1 and haying demos starting at 2. So if you're interested in mowing, baling, or raking, uh, or hay handling, that'll all be in the afternoon. Well, Dina, thanks so much. Thank you. Kind of need to get up closer to take a better look, but uh, everybody's always interested in what these corn heads do for residue and obviously getting every kernel you can. So. Uh, it's great to have this demonstration and we can take a look at it. You know, this gearing off going the wrong way, showing it can cut. However, uh, that's that's something you don't want, yeah, see before, I'm guessing. No, that's something I definitely wanted to check out. And it's, uh, you know, there again, want to get up close and see just how it's doing that, but it looked like it was doing a good job. Okay, for more on all the machines you're seeing out here, make sure to check us out online at Nebraska.tv or look for NTV's Grow on Facebook and Twitter. Out here at Husker Harvest Days, a lot of opportunities, especially in the livestock area too. It's not all just about corn and planting and all that kind of stuff and big machinery. There's an opportunity for cattlemen and cattle producers out there as well. And this is one of them. And explain, this is your show, your pin right here. Explain what you brought out here to Husker Harvest Days. Today we brought out four calves. They're Semitol cross calves, one purebred calf and three percentage calves. Uh, the Nebraska Semitol Association brought us this booth space with all our advertising dollars. We've brought breeders together from the southeast corner to the northwest corner, northeast corner to southwest. 
and we all came together in Grand Island to bring these cattle out and showcase them for people. And a little bit of everything here, there's bulls, big bulls, big heifers, small calves, uh, all kinds of prospects here for ranchers to come look at. And this is an opportunity for you to even get to talk to possible business people from Kansas, other areas, right? This oh, is a big yeah. opportunity. The Husker Harvest Days is a big draw area. We've gotten customers from Colorado, Kansas, South Dakota, all coming here to Husker Harvest Days because it's a big drawing card to come here. Now for you personally in your operation, why do you prefer Simitals? What got you started? Our Simital cattle and Simital cross cattle give us our most performance and punch for our investment in cows. The reproductive efficiency of the Simital cow is amazing, especially those half-blood cows. We use a lot of Simital Angus cross in our cow program at home on our commercial cows, and it is a tremendous, tremendous cross. You get the black hide color, you get all the muscle and traits of the Simital breed, you get some marbling traits, and just the longevity and the overall cross of that half-blood is tremendous. Let's talk about the cattle industry here a little bit. It's had its bumps and had its challenges. Yes. How how do you think it's going right now here? What are some challenges you guys are facing? Obviously, last year the drought had a huge impact on pastures. Explain how that's kind of improved really this this season. Drought conditions have improved. They're not out of the woods by any means, but we're facing some feed cost issues right now. Uh, grain is still not cheap and especially not in my part of the world but our feed sources everything inputs have went up and but we're looking at record high calf prices on the commercial man i watched some yearlings sell for 1500 bucks the other day at the local sale barn so that's got to help the bottom line i think the cattle deal is looking really good right now our cow numbers are low so supply and demand is going to keep these calf prices up and yearling prices up for the commercial producer and have you guys had to adjust? Obviously, technology keeps improving and that kind of thing, too. What are some things even for feed? You know, there's the cake option, for instance, too. And you guys do adjust to that, right? Oh, it, things are changing on feed and nutrition all the time. You've got all the new feed sources coming from the distillers and all the processed grain products and working that into your operation, finding what works and what balances and what can make your uh, bottom line the most efficient. There's definitely new technology and feed sources. Uh, we're tracing these cattle all the way from the cow to the dinner plate with EID tags and electronic uh, identification. And, and you guys do that? We do do that on our calves that we sell. And I don't do it on all the cows because I, I have a better idea where they're at than a computer right. does, but the <laughs> EID, I do do that on for traceability on all our cattle that go through the feedlot. They're all EID'd. What do you want consumers to understand about the cattle industry? I mean, you're a producer, you're working hard, you're taking care of these animals, right? Well, look at that meat counter and you say, wow, that looks like the steak's really expensive, but there is a lot of, think of all the effort and the time and energy and input costs that go into putting that steak on your table. And in the United States, you have some of the cheapest food in the world. You may think that steak or that burger costs a lot, but the United States people have to work a lot less days of the year to pay for the food on their table than you do in Europe or any other country in the world. We have some of the cheapest food in the world and American farmers and ranchers take more pride in producing a quality product that is safe and the best product they can provide. Keep that in mind when you look at the price in the grocery store. Yeah, for sure. Something to think about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do these guys have names too or do you name no, them? No, okay. they don't have names yet. Well, maybe I'll name them by the time we're done. All right. If Thank you have you questions, you bet. If you have questions, go to our website, nebraska.tv. Yes, I believe so too. And another th reason why this is going to be a great day, we have some wonderful stuff here this hour for sure. We're going to talk right now behind us. You see already in the background, yeah. we've got some of our fantastic Nebraska FFA students from across the state. Yes. And they are here because we have a very special visitor with us We this do, and morning. let's bring him in here with us. Why don't we just bring in <laughs> Governor Heineman? Hello. Marilyn and Steve, I'm glad to be with you today. I appreciate the fact that you've brought some rain here to central and southwest <laughs> Nebraska. We can always use it, especially okay. down the Republican River Basin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Governor, we're here and we got some kids and we're going to interact with them in just a little bit. But first, we want to start out uh, our Lieutenant Governor. He has uh, been overseas and tell mm -hmm. us about uh, the work that's going on in Taiwan right now. You know, I'm very pleased with his work. You know, Lieutenant Governor LeVon Heidemann is a farmer. He understands the value of exports. And we just signed a $400 million deal for Nebraska corn, wheat and soybeans over in Taiwan. Uh, we did a similar agreement when I was over there three years ago. That's the value of these international trade missions that we go 
on all the time. We have more people to feed throughout the world. They need Nebraska beef, Nebraska corn, Nebraska soybeans. Every product we have, the world needs. And you're able to capitalize on that. So you were in Taiwan. Some of us don't get the chance to go over there, you know, and, and agriculturally, what really shocked you or what did you see while you were over there that, that you could learn about and tell other people about? Well, I, I think what we saw over there is the need for our products to have a relationship with them. And, and here's the other thing I want to give credit to our Department of Agriculture. This isn't something we do every three years. We're in contact with them on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis throughout the year. And therefore, we know when they need our products, when the timing is right uh, to go over there. I was just in China six months ago. Uh, uh, we continue to expand that relationship. Uh, I've been to Europe. I've been down to Cuba. I've been uh, all over the world because they need our products, and we're producing the right quality and the right kind of products, particularly in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And Japan definitely going in the right direction now with the cattle trade. Obviously, there were some politics definitely at play there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can kind of roll your eyes at that one with what they did <laughs> with that. Uh, and. You know, fortunately, they're starting to accept more of our beef products, you know, our, but it's going to be a bit of a reintroduction because there's a generation of Japanese consumers who don't know about our great corn-fed beef. I, I, I would just tell you that, you know, our Department of Agriculture, Greg Ibon, our people have already been over there. We're aggressively reentering the Japanese market. Their consumers want Nebraska beef. Uh, and again, we just need to reintroduce the product. You know, the other thing, when we were over in China, I think it was three years ago, we, we stopped in Hong Kong. They have a culinary school. We signed a special agreement with them. All the chefs in that area are uh, learning the, their trade with Nebraska beef. And the end result, then we hope they'll want it in their restaurants, and we've seen a pretty good example that's working. Yeah, and Japan was a huge market that we did lose those several years ago, and it's nice to see that come back. Let's move on here, too, because the water task force. You know, we went to the UNL uh, display here, and water is such a big issue, and they're really educating anybody that wants to come out here to Husker Harvest Days about water and usage and that kind of thing. This water task force that's formed, what do you think about this? Are they making any headway? Because that's a lot of work they're going to have to do here in the next few months. Marilyn, what I would tell you, first of all, I just went through that UNL uh, demonstration over here, and they're talking about variable rate uh, irrigation and some other things to make uh, uh, our use of water even more efficient in the in the future. The Water Policy Task Force is very important to the future of Nebraska, especially agriculture. They're just beginning their discussion. So what's going to come out yet, I don't know. I believe it will be very productive. They'll come forward with a series of recommendations. We'll evaluate those in and continue to move forward. But this much I know for sure. Water is critical to agriculture, critical to business, and critical to our communities. And that's what Nebraska is all about. So we have to make sure we manage this resource even better in the future. And I believe we're capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. Governor, I was talking with some of our farm friends, and they tell us this next session of the legislature could be very influential in the world of agriculture because not just that water issue, but the tax issue. Certainly when we talk about tax reform, and I know you, that's certainly right up at the top of your list trying to help us out there. Uh, how, how do you involve agriculture? Because we know that the property tax is paid by those in agriculture, and that is mo a, a local issue. But mm -hmm. how do, can the state policy reflect that so we're not putting too much burden on them yet creating tax relief for all of us? Well, well Steve and Marilyn, first thing I want to say is the Tax Modernization Committee is moving in the right direction. Senator Hadley's providing excellent leadership. And, and I've had conversations with him and members of the committee and other members of the legislature. I think we all know taxes are too high in this state, property taxes, income and occupation taxes. So I believe at the end of the day, we have a unique opportunity for income and property tax relief. You're right. Property tax relief primarily is going to occur at the local level. But at the state level, for example, our property tax credit fund, maybe we could add additional funding there. Uh, there are a number of things where we want to help agriculture because, again, it's key. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we've got to lower taxes. It is going to be one of the critical issues along with water uh, and along with the discussion we're going to have, for example, on good time uh, reform regarding our prison system. 
Are you enjoying Husker Harvest Days so far? I know it's early. Uh, you know you. what? I always love coming out here. <laughs> I, I was out here a few days for the uh, Nebraska State Fair, which was a huge mm-hmm. success again. Uh, been one of the best decisions we've ever made to move it out here. Uh, attendance was off just narrowly, but that was mostly because oh, of the it weather. So it, yeah. it was just too hot. So, no. Husker Harvest Days, great opportunity to promote Nebraska and Nebraska agriculture. And our special guest, Governor Heineman, but our very special guest, the future of agriculture. We've got Nebraska. Nebraska FFA students joining us, and I think Marilyn's got some kids. You bet. Got some questions for us. And, and we're going to start with you here. Tell, tell us your name, where you're from, and uh, you have a question for the governor, there right? You know. Okay. Um, I'm Amanda Kowaleski. I'm from the Gothenburg FFA chapter. Um, I was just wondering, we heard about a dairy plant closing in Hastings recently, and we were wondering, as the future agriculturalists, how we can keep those businesses businesses open and what we can do to make sure those businesses survive. Well, I want you to know that 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 industry is very important to the future of Nebraska, the entire livestock industry. And so we need to make sure that we're working with our local producers. We need to educate our uh, people in Nebraska how important the dairy, the cattle industry, the hog industry, all of them are to the state of Nebraska. And it'll just be an ongoing effort because, again, agriculture is the number one industry in this state, and we don't want to lose any sector. Right, and then we have some good questions back here too. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Jacob Barley. I'm from the Grand Island Northwest FFA chapter. Uh, and I was wondering, uh, we're glad that you guys took a stand against the HSUS uh, in the defense of the agricultural industry. Where do you see this problem proceeding to? Well, first of all, I think everybody needs to be aware of the Humane Society of the United States is anti-agriculture. They're not associated with our local humane societies. Uh, I don't trust them. Uh, they're out here to destroy the number one industry, all the jobs associated with that, the future for all of you. So I'm going to continue to fight them. And if they want to come to Nebraska, they're in for the fight of their life. We're not going to underestimate them at all. And right now, I think they're a little nervous. But again, we never know when this fight's going to be over. We're working uh, with local chambers of commerce who've been very, very supportive. All of you have been very good about working with young people. And so we've got to be on constant alert regarding this in, uh, this particular organization because HSUS doesn't appreciate what agriculture does for the entire world. And uh, tell me your name and where you're from. I'm Bailey Aiden from the Gothenburg FFA chapter. And do you have a question for the governor? Mm. You don't? No. Oh, okay. hey, do Mar- you have a question for her? I, I, think Mar- I, have, I, I think- have a question for all of them, particularly the, the four up front, these okay, girls ladies. from uh, Gothenburg. They're all juniors. Uh, and I want to know what you're planning to do for college. And we want to encourage you to go visit a college uh, because whether you're in agriculture or any uh, particular sector of our economy now, you need at least two years of college, preferably four. So what are you thinking? What do you think? Um, I don't know for sure. I definitely want something agriculture related, but as for what exactly, I have no idea. I'm just keeping my options open, I guess. What are you What are you gonna do? Um, well, right now, I kind of want to go to UNL, and I kind of want to be a physical therapist. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, you too. Oh man, um, I have no idea actually. <laughs> my brother just went off to college, and he has no clue what he's doing yet. <laughs> So I'll probably just take generals maybe at a community college and then go to a four-year college. For sure you're wanting to go to college? Yes. Okay. And what about you? Um, I'm probably going to want to go to UNL, but I think something in the health field, but I'm not for sure on that yet. Okay. So. There you go. Nice question, Governor. You got well, him on you know, the key, the, the key is we need all of you to go to college. Go visit several so you can figure out, you know, which one makes sense for you. But uh, whatever field you're going to uh, go into, you need that education. And do you have a question for the governor? Tell me your name, where you're from, and if you have a question, go ahead and I throw do. that out. Yep. My name is Jeremy Kroger, and I am from the Grand Island Northwest FFA chapter here in town. And I was just, I was kind of wondering, what do you see as the main benefits from Husker Harvest Days for Nebraska FFA, and also some main benefits for maybe um, our age group as, like, the future agriculturalists in Nebraska? Well, I, I think it's a benefit for you because you can come out here and see how important the ag industry is. Uh, for our farmers and ranchers, they get an opportunity to see the latest technology, the University of Nebraska research that we were just talking about. So this is a wonderful opportunity to promote agriculture. And again, I'll, I'll keep repeating, it is the number one industry in this state. And when agriculture does well, Main Street Nebraska does well. And the more people we can get who come and observe what the opportunities are here, 
earlier, uh, the opportunities in terms of the technology today that makes agriculture the most efficient and the most productive part of our society, all of those are great benefits. Because, Governor, as we look at careers in agriculture, there's such a variety out there for these young people to go into. They could be working at an ethanol plant. Mm -hmm. They could be working in the food processing. Uh, so many I, I, we couldn't even list all the possibilities, right? Oh, well, Steve, I think that's very, very uh, crucial that you understand. Uh, and it's all the associated industries. Uh, we mentioned ethanol and alternative energy. What about food processing? Sure. Being a veterinarian. Uh, and, and then all the associated uh, other industries that are indirectly related. Uh, hey, we got to have hotels, restaurants, and all the rest, physical therapists, whatever it may be. You know, Governor, all of our Nebraska communities are related to agriculture. You look at our communities out here, whether you're Grand Island or you're in Holdridge or wherever, agriculture makes our communities go. So do you feel good knowing that we have some fantastic kids like this who are hopefully going to be going into some of those fields well, for well, us? Well, Steve, I think it's fair to say one of these eight individuals is going to be the governor in about 20 years from now, <laughs> and they're going to have the opportunity to do this interview, and that'll be great for the state. That's wonderful. And, Steve, I want to introduce these two ladies, too. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Kelly Hostler from the Northwest FFA chapter. And what's your name? Where are you from? Casey Hoosman, Northwest FFA chapter. Okay. And Governor, did you want to touch a little bit on your plan here? Steve told me about that you you really want to make college affordable for these these kids to attend and, and our future kids. You know, Steve's going to have children. I'm going to. I just had my first. Help us out here. Give us some information <laughs> yeah, exactly. that we can uh, get these kids through college. Mar Marilyn, I can help you in a couple ways. Number one, this year we doubled the income tax deduction for the Nebraska college savings plan to start saving for that we worked with the university of nebraska and our state colleges we have a two-year tuition freeze uh, we wanted to become a top 10 college going state we're now number seven in the country we've worked with the university and our colleges to make sure that you can get through college in four years with 120 credit hours instead of the credit creep that we have seen the other thing we're trying to do for high school students we want to uh, have uh, them have the opportunity for dual credit classes, particularly in your senior year. Well, fantastic. Governor, I get to see this guy, you know, every couple of weeks I'm running into him somewhere. But there's nowhere better to talk to the governor than with an audience like this. So I really Absolutely. appreciate all of these guys. And we have much more from Husker Harvest Days live coming up right after this.